Thank you all my other people too that have been here every week. Thank you guys for coming and sitting right there. Give it up for the black people sitting up front this week. Liberation. That's right. That's right. Starts out with the back of the bus to the front of the bus. Next thing you know, we're sitting up here. They got about 15 points in their credit score. They're officially at 505 now. Up to 490. Y'all give it up for them. They're going to go all the way to JC Penney's to see you. I pulled my credit report. Anybody done that lately? Anybody pulled their credit report recently? Are you full jobs? Yeah. See, everybody else got a good credit. They ain't got to do that. But us with the messed up credit, we have to pull it and dispute stuff. I look at some stuff on my credit report. I had some so old on my, I had a, a bill from Sears Roebuck. Yeah. <laughs> and some Sears Roebuck, that's what they called it like back in the day. I had an account with them like when I was like 19. I felt bad about it. Got some PlayStation 2 and some other shit on there. Just fucking mad. It was layaway, all right. I laid it away at a house and moved to another one. They just couldn't find me. It was all right, though, man. Thank you all for coming in to week five. Oh, that's my comedy. Thank you. Oh, we got people sitting on the side. Oh, this is where the black people sit at. This is the black people section right here. How y'all doing? Off to the side. Ducked off. Reparations. We got the reparations table over here. That's what I'm talking about. I don't know why they're talking about reparations. Too many different kind of black people to give us all reparations. I don't want no bullshit reparations either. I don't want no stimulus package. $270. I want enough to buy a goddamn house, put a car, you know, a car on some real shit. Now, what $207? What are they going to do for me? I got a laptop already. I don't need one. <laughs> but I do need you to take a porn off my laptop. So I stepped away from Pornhub for a minute. I got to elaborate. I'm looking at some stuff I wasn't supposed to. I'm going to bring it up there to you. It's going to fuck your hand. I'll be hanging. Damn. This is some real shit. But we got to get the morale and the energy up here. Y'all all right tonight? Woo! Oh, yeah. I love that, man. Black people go, woo. Black white people go, yeah. We blend them all together. It's gonna be real. It's gonna be great, man. We're gonna have a great time tonight. Uh, we're on week five. Week five of the comedy competition. Uh, we had some comedians that actually called in and had some things come up. Couldn't make it an anniversary. Somebody's mom was in the hospital. For the first time, I seen white people quit. I never seen that shit before. White people never quit anything. You know what I'm saying? They keep on to the end. Cause you ever seen the marathon? It's dudes from Ethiopia and Kenya. They win every year. They run the same way the whole 26 miles. But it's a white dude named Chad who's doing this in memory of his auntie. And he's not going to quit for shit. They don't tell about it, but Chad finishes like the next fucking day. The Ethiopians are already back in Ethiopia. And Chad comes across the finish line. It's a momentous thing. White people never quit anything except this competition. We have some white people to quit. Ain't that terrible? Don't you feel bad? It depends on who they were. Oh no, it was, it was the wrong motherfucker. He was pretty funny. It was funny people that quit. Yeah, Tim didn't quit. I just want to let y'all know that. Tim is still going to be here. That's him in the background now. That's the funniest Tim they're ever going to get tonight. So y'all give it up for Tim before the contest even starts. Mm -hmm. Only chance we're going to get to laugh with Tim tonight. I hope Tim has some better stuff. But then again, he's the same dude he was the past three weeks. But it's okay though, we're gonna have a good time regardless, man. This is week five, that's my comic. Um, we're actually having a comedy competition. We're gonna be giving away a cash prize at the end of the 10 weeks, and they're gonna get an opportunity to open for a major headliner as well. So they get some money in their pocket and a chance to advance their comedy career. So this is a wonderful thing, okay? Wow, that guy is tall. He is really tall. Y'all look, thank you, tall guy. <laughs> All right, so yeah, I, I wanted to pinch his cheeks. I, I didn't know, I didn't see him. Why didn't y'all tell him he was over there? Y'all, he let me walk by the table. Oh, that's so nice. That's so special. Kichi, kichi, cool. I do something, he's not my ass. I'm going to get your ass out of my bed. I'm just playing, man, these jokes. And y'all give it up for the uh, security staff. We have security staff that's not here. So, <laughs> If anybody feels the need to jump on stage, it's going to be between you and the comic at this time. Oh, please don't jump in while I'm up there because I'm, I'm under probation. I got problems. I mean, don't your ass out. It's okay, though. It's okay, man. Now, moving right along, our topic for this week is generational gap, okay? Generational gap, yes, that's right. And I thought about my generational gap. See, I was raised by old school black people. None of the shit they said makes sense. But we couldn't contest it. Cause see, in this era here, you could call, text, tweet, all that shit. People would come to your rescue. In an old school black house, 
one thing you had was a fucking people and a goddamn house phone. And then, matter of fact, if you ain't had no privileged family, you ain't even had no portable house phone. You had that motherfucker that was stuck on the wall. Uh, my favorite, remember that rotary phone? How you gonna call 911 stop somebody from beating your ass? You got <laughs> If your mama do fall asleep, you call 911, you can wake up with that loud ass phone. Who is that on the phone? Get off my goddamn phone. Remember that, man. Old school. I was raised by old school Southern people, Southern values. Anybody ever heard this before? You open up the door and your mom and daddy say, Stop letting all my air conditioning out the door. I said, I was never going to say that shit till I got my first $300 power bill. Hey, stop letting all my air conditioning out the door. Just like my goddamn parents, man. The same shit. Remember you two? You used to go up to the refrigerator, open the refrigerator door, and leave it open too long. Yeah, you cheap ass granddaddy coming. Hey, boy, hey, come, 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 that goddamn fridge, fridge down, don't. Hold that fridge down, don't. <laughs> same thing the other day. I told my kid, take a picture of it. Go sit down, look over the thing, pick out what you want, then go back in. <laughs> What's in the ball? Electricity in the house. And you got a $300 power bill from a gangster organization called Jefferson Electric. Anybody heard these people before? <laughs> Shit. No payment arrangement. No month in the whole When we say the 14th, we mean the 14th. They on the way at 12.01 on the 15th. They already on the way to cut your shit off, man. So y'all don't know about that, because y'all don't have that. Oh you, oh, you got some lights coming off the phone? Holy oh, shit. Oh, you got Jefferson, too? Oh, yeah, see, they, they don't care where you live at, either. You in a house, duplex, single-wide trailer? They don't give a fuck. Hey, my blind grandma in here. We don't give a fuck. Tell that blind bitch come pay the bill. <laughs> <laughs> that shit crazy, man. It's crazy, crazy, crazy. Week five, we are in here, man. Thank everybody for coming out. I definitely appreciate everybody. Thank you again for coming back, IT guy. Appreciate you. Appreciate all y'all, my family in here that I ain't borrowed sugar from yet. I'm coming to borrow sugar from y'all. Seriously, okay? I've been hanging out. I've been hanging out. Okay, I'm telling y'all, I'm almost there. I've been going to Coles. I stopped going to Marshall and TJ Maxx. I've been going over to Coles and Bell. I'm over here on Washington Road. I'm hanging out at Martinez, okay? We're going to get together. We're going to drink tea one day. We're going to do some things. Maybe we, hey, maybe we can go to Starbucks. We'll have a lot of tea. Oh, that's it. Oh, I'm going to give me a white one tonight, y'all. I'm not leaving. I'll be on the other end of Washington Road. We're we moving on up. I'm your host. My name is Comedian Cedric, man. We're going to keep this thing going this time. We're going to meet the judges. Now, the way this thing goes is everybody has a say in what goes on tonight, all right? Y'all going to get cards. See y'all early. I got y'all cards all early. You're going to pick your top three comedians of the night. The judges are going to pick their top three as well. Um, and they're going to tabulate. We're going to go over the judges' votes at the end of the night, get that information. Your votes will be tabulated and then be placed online the very next day, okay? We also have a page on Facebook called That's My Comic. Please like this page, go to this page, follow these comics, follow their lives. I don't know what a lot of them do during the week, but please, ain't can't y'all get it, please tell them, don't do the bullshit they did last week. Don't so come out here and be funny. We had, a, we had a down week last week. I had to go back and rethink my career. What am I doing? But I feel good about everybody. Everybody's upbeat, they're energized. They looked over the topic this week. Everybody knew what the topic was, except for the same person. But we had somebody explain it to him in the group. And believe it or not, it was a black dude that knew what it was. I was like, holy shit, man. It was like a, 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 a moment in black pride. I was like, dang, man, you really helped that brother out. We raised our fists together like this right here. I was going to pick my afro, but I got my goddamn hair out. So. <laughs> but everybody helped each other out, so we are back this week. We're going to take it to the judges. We're going to meet the judges. At this time, this is one of the most sordid men in Augusta I've ever met. If there's any job under the sun that's professional, this man is done. He's real estate. He's been a police officer. He's even pimp hoes. Please give it up for my man, Jamar Bingham. Your light skinned black man that opened up between your doors for you. Oh, the man himself, the myth, the legend. I mean, the past four weeks have really taken his fame to another level. Uh, he is now up to 16 Facebook friends. He's been drinking at this bar for some time and it's finally paid off. But please give it up for Lester, also known as Paul Paul. I 
got no jokes about this man because he owns the spot. <laughs> Say something about it, he could probably kick me out of this bitch. <laughs> but he is the brainchild behind this whole thing, man. Uh, we came, we sat down, we bring, you know, because a lot of times when people in Augusta come together and say they're going to do something, they don't do shit. But this man actually sat down, we made it happen, and we got it on track. And he is the brainchild behind That's My Comic, and he's the owner of Chevy. Please give it up, Mr. Mike Snowberger. You knew that nationality, so you said the name Snowberger. You knew that it's not going to be a black guy walking out. <laughs> Who was the running back in the football game? Wasn't that goddamn Snowberger? <laughs> Are y'all ready to get started, man? Somebody say, yeah. 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 Say it one time, yeah. yeah. Good as fuck. Now your credit score went down about 10 points. <laughs> God damn it, I'm in a 690. Shit, let me get that shit. I'm still in goddamn fours. At this time, man, his brother coming to the stage has had his ups and downs, but the ups are coming again, man. He's currently in fifth place. Currently in fifth place. Please give a warm. That's my comic. Well, y'all start clapping right now. Start clapping right now. For the one and only Foolie. Some of these kids, 
He was on his knees. Listen to me. He was on his knees. The shit was past his knees. He was holding it like this. Now, the fucked up situation is, he was looking at the camera like this and smiling. Who the fuck took the picture? That's what I was like. I said, you know what? That's some fucked up shit, man. And, she, and then the mom went, I don't know what I'm going to do with him. I'm like, shit, I know what he going to do to him. That's fucked up. <laughs> yeah, so I'm in this bitch like that, and uh, we're going to write it like that. <laughs> Clap or something. Hey. Shit, clap or something. Damn. <laughs> Y'all give it up one more time for Foolish. Man. Dicks down to your knees. Five minutes to talk about something. You talk about somebody with a dick down to their knees. Woo, all right, let's take this on to the judges right here. This is gonna be good. First judge, we haven't got the microphone. Go with it. The legendary Paul Paul. <laughs> I thought you done your homework. I did. Oh, it sounded like porn to me. I, I know it's funny. I, that's all I got to say about that. <laughs> uh, Mike Snowbird. Thank you. Foolish, first thing I'd do is get rid of that stool. Because the two and the straw, the first, the two weeks that you've been good here, you weren't sitting down. You were actually up, moving around, getting in it. When you sit on that stool, I mean, that's that's nothing when that's what you have to say. Well, uh, your material fucked you up, but <laughs> <laughs> but that didn't help. Because all I'm saying, so if I was you, I would I would. Uh, you need to move around. You, you Skyler has his own stick. He does his own thing. It's his style. It ain't your style. Um, yeah. <laughs> the, the first week you was up here, I kind of feel like we went back to that. How you sat down and you, you was just there, I'm just here. You know what I mean? I was a little borderline thinking you was about to tell us some child pornography shit. You was about to admit to some shit to get your ass locked up in this motherfucker. But, <laughs> But nah, it just, it, it, you had one little funny part of that, man, it really didn't, you know what I mean, it didn't do it for me. All right, y'all give it up one more time for Foolish. <laughs> I knew that shit was gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> I almost said, well, yeah, I ain't funny that, that's all I gotta say. Love it, man, love it, love it. Good critiquing, though, good critiquing. Your body language, your posture tells confidence. When you sit down, you slumped over, it's different. When you up front projecting, you know what I'm saying? When Donald Trump is lying to us, he is up front and two face shining in the fucking camera, right there talking about Fox. And he, every time he lied to us. He lied to us so well, we believe this shit. I'm like, damn, this motherfucker is really telling us. I want to go around grabbing pussy too. I think I should be able to do that. This is invisible shit. I believe in it. My president said that. The posture, you got to project. But hey, man, it's a learning experience, man. It's a learning experience. This competition is far from over. We're right in the middle. So definitely take what the judges say to heart. Learn from it. Come back and do better, man. It's not anything that we're doing to beat y'all down or tell y'all apart. Because at the end of the day, I will be at work in the morning. I still got bills to pay. Matter of fact, I'm behind on about six or seven of them. I will be starting to go fund me page as well. So if y'all wanna <laughs> contribute to the delinquency of a grown person, please. <laughs> y'all can do that. Uh, it's some kind of tax write-off. Somebody can find a tax write-off. It's a lot of smart people in here. If anybody know a tax write-off, I will let y'all adopt my ass. I will move in with you. I got kids and a wife. I ain't bringing none of them up with me. This is me. This is a solo mission. I like the same shit y'all like. I like Star Wars, I love Elvis, and I hate OJ. So we should be all right, it should be okay, right? Good. Moving along to the next comic, man. Next comic, man, coming up. This guy's currently in sixth place, man. He cracks me up, man. Really funny, very unique individual. I want y'all to start clapping right now. Start clapping. Give it up for the one and only, Mr. Ron D. I can't do that for 
too long. How are we doing tonight? Hell yeah! Generations. Whatever happened to just hurting your knee, like as a kid? Because my generation, as we've grown up, we've become more and more fearful of everything. I got a bee sting as a kid, and my dad broke his cigarette, spit it, and rubbed it on it. <laughs> Which I don't think had anything to do with me. I think he just hated me. He did that often. The bee sting was just an excuse. But I told my buddy not too long ago, I was uh, having a stomach ache, and I called him, and he was like, well, tell me the symptoms. I'll Google it. And I was like, oh, you know, you know, I got a headache. He was stomach hurts a little bit. He called me back 10 minutes later. He's like, you're going to die in four days. <laughs> I was like, you got all that from a stomach ache? He's like, no, you drink so much. And the drugs, Dean, the drugs. If they don't kill you, someone at the comedy show will. I saw you last week. Uh, but the new generation coming up is, I think, going to be the biggest double-edged sword society has ever seen. These kids growing up now are taking computing classes in elementary school. They're going to be the future that either makes or breaks us, and that's terrifying for me. Because these are also the same little dumbasses at 10 a.m. at Walmart, Fortnite dancing in public, while I'm nursing a hangover. One of them's taking a shit on the floor with a GoPro, something about, this is the new kick the shit challenge. While someone in the corner eats a fucking Tide Pod. I'm not looking forward to it. And that's another thing, the internet. Who, who let them on it? There's parents in the audience. Do your job. I didn't have that access. To, I didn't have a phone on me 24-7 growing up. I just didn't. The only embarrassing shit that was recorded of me is shown at family reunions when we dust off, dust off the VHS player at Christmas. And to whoever I bring home that I'm dating, my mom has the incessant needs like, oh, you want to see little Dean run around the kitchen yelling, George, George, George out the jungle and hit his head into the fucking fridge? <laughs> it's not okay. Basically, what I'm telling you all is put on your tinfoil hats and be paranoid. I'm riding this on fire bus to the end on whatever drugs I can afford. And I hope stem cell research lasts long enough that I can live to see the end. <laughs> More or less, that's all I have for you tonight. I've been Run Dean. Good fucking luck. Now y'all give it up one more time for my man Rum Dean. We're gonna take it over to the judges, to the judges. Rum, I thought that was the best that you've done since we started this whole thing. So, um, really good job, good energy. That was great. All right. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, you did a real good job. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was actually fucking hilarious. And you stayed on topic the whole time. And that's something that's hard to do. Some people get on topic because they'll hit one point and then get into regular jokes. But you stayed on topic the whole time. That shit was hilarious, man. Hell yeah. Y'all give it up for Rum Dean one more time. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Sound like Stone Cold Steve Austin out here. Off to 316 says, I'll just whip your ass. <laughs> Love that, man. Ain't nothing like seeing a arena full of 12-year-olds say, hell yeah, that's some great shit. <laughs> we want to bring up our country. That is beautiful. I miss old school wrestling. How I many y'all remember, remember old school wrestling? Like they talk trash back in the day? My favorite wrestler all the time was Rick Flair. Yeah. Woo! Woo! That nature boy. 16-time heavyweight champion. <laughs> but bitch, he lost the best 82 times. It didn't matter, though. Rick Flair was a goddamn man. Rick Flair feels like he's 17. Y'all seen Rick Flair recently? He can't even woo no more. Woo! Woo! Think you about dead. You better not sit your ass down. Rick Flair's like he mouth to mouth all the time. And he rubbed the things on his chest right quick. Huh? Wake Rick Flair up. It's time for the time we're gonna be on the commercial. Love Rick Flair. Love old school wrestling. But well, we're gonna keep this thing moving. This shit is not about me. We got the eight contestants tonight, and I'm definitely gonna make it home. 
to watch CSI tonight. So I'm really wow. happy about it. Yes. yes. Thank you. I love that. And I like seeing people get killed, maimed, murdered, <laughs> raped, all in the first 45 seconds of the show. That is some beautiful <laughs> shit. Wonderful. And what y'all find? Y'all be like me? Y'all be looking to see who's going to get it first? There'll be like four people in there. I mean, who's, who's, who's four people going to get fucked up, man? All over my hope. <laughs> And why did Elliot and the old lady, why did they never go? Why did, why did he never have an affair? You supposed to have an affair. She's cute. I like her. What's her name? The one with Elliot? The one with her? I forgot her name. Y'all know her name. Whatever her name is, you should have fucked her. I was like, man, good. You was on that job for nothing. Then his daughter went crazy, lost his family. That's you like, damn, I know I should have fucked my coworker then. Yeah, well, I guess I'll be the only one to think that. All the dudes want to say it, but y'all be with women, y'all can say that shit. My wife at home tonight, so. I can see all the foul shit I want to. Anybody love their mother-in-law? Clap it up, you love your mother-in-law? Yeah. I love my mother-in-law so much, man. I, I, I got her a vacation. I got her a round trip to the Dominican Republic. Yeah. She ain't but two days late. She ain't but two days late. It was round trip. I paid for it. It's not stupid ass to come back, not me. <laughs> Sometimes this stuff is about me, it's therapy. We're gonna keep this thing moving, man. This brother came in this week. Y'all gotta give him some sympathy now. He came in limping a little bit. He was parked in the handicap spot outside with no sticker on it, so he's probably gonna get the ticket. He's used to tickets. He's been on probation for a while. He's, he's a good guy. He went to Josie High School. That's what they do at Josie High School. They get on probation. I can say that I'm black. Y'all better not laugh at that shit. We be waiting outside your car. What the fuck you talking about, Josie? We're civilized with jobs. We don't do that stuff. This is my man. We go way back. We go way back. Y'all please start clapping right now and give a warm. That's my comment. Welcome to Mr. Bernie Boy Howard. No smile, wet jerry curls, all kind of shit. This is dirty. No cocaine, now you can go to jail for cocaine. Now you go to jail for cocaine. In the 90s, here's what happened. We forgot that these crackheads was fucking. 
<laughs> we forgot. They fucked. They weren't just in there. They was fucking. You know, in the 80s, we seen them goddamn commercials. This is your brain on drugs. <laughs> we saw the babies in the fucking incubators and shit looking all fucked up, looking like raisins and shit. All the motherfuckers didn't die. All the motherfuckers didn't die. They grew up in the 90s. They grew up in the fucking 90s. That's where all your carjacking and all your gangbanging and shit come from. You got them crack babies, boy. Yeah. Another thing about the 90s, man, I like, man, well, Phones, they came in fucking carrying bags. Y'all remember that shit? Yeah, yeah. yeah a big ass fucking. <laughs> carrying a fucking bag, man. Carrying a fucking bag. You got a bag on your shoulder. Phone, this goddamn big on your mother. <laughs> talking, talking, man, I'm losing my reception, man. Just, hey, let me get over here up under this tree. I can't hear a goddamn thing. Big ass phones, man. So, yeah, the 90s, man. But in the 2000s, oh my God, oh my God. I think this is our last year of existence, man, the way she's going. We all know that. G, G, listen, listen, I was talking with my pastor, and he, he, he was trying to bring me to, to Christ, and I told him, Pastor, Jesus will be here next week, boy. This should be. We all know that. He's young motherfuckers like that, damn it, man. But yeah, man, but generation got things have changed. Things have changed. I remember. And McDonald's, let's go to McDonald's to break my neck to go to fucking McDonald's, man. Because you could fucking get full and buy you some pussy for a dollar in the 80s, man. You look for a cheeseburger, a french fry, a soda, an apple pie. You still had 40 cents left pussy worth $40 back then with 40 cents. Get you some pussy for 40 cents back then, man. Fucking dollars. Now, these motherfuckers want the whole 40 dollars. They want 40 goddamn dollars. Cash out me for this pussy. <laughs> My name is Burkhead. Thank you. Y'all give it up for Kevin Durant. Y'all give it up for Kevin Durant. You just signed that Max Steel with the uh, with the New Jersey Nets. <laughs> Let's take it to the judges. Who we got first? You. Hey, Bert. <laughs> it was funny because there was a lot of shit that I could relate to. You know what I mean? The energy, the energy, I know you limping and shit, so you couldn't do too much jumping around and shit. But right, right. It was, that, it was funny, man. You had some key points. You stayed on target too, far as the time. So good job, man. Thank you. All right, the legendary Paw Paw. Yeah, you doing good. <laughs> No matter what I say, I sound like a fucking Jesus going after you. <laughs> yeah, it's working out well for me. By the way, uh, Paul Paul did get a vote last week, or two votes from the crowd participation. So Paul Paul's got zero points in the competition, but he is rising quickly. Uh, Birdie, uh, that's a pretty good job. I uh, I liked uh, I liked all the different ideas you had. Uh, I think if you would have picked like one or two of them and, and worked them a little bit longer, yeah. I think it probably would have been a little bit funnier, but right. I did like the the numerous different ideas you had, so it's pretty good. <laughs> Give it up one more time for Bernie Boy. That's right, y'all. Let's, let's spray him off the stage. Let's spray him off the stage. Make sure you get the... We fall down, but we get up. We fall down, but we get up. For a saint is dead, a sinner who fell down. And God, it's universal, man. It's online. They know it. Get back up again. Get back up again. Y'all like. It. Y'all give it up again for Bert, man. That was awesome. Under the stress. This man had one good leg and lift up. And he tried to dance. Y'all see that dance in place? That was tough, wasn't it? He made y'all think he was doing one. That's my hands moving. Get up. Get down. Get up. Get it loose. And you know why people pick that up? That's the same way we do it. 
that was outstanding, man. Love it, man. Love, love the energy and the individuality, man. You went through every era there was. That was beautiful, man. Yeah, you did, you did, man. You did. I know you smoke crack, too. Crack, but wrong with that guy. Okay, man, cocaine, baby, not the crack. Okay, no, yeah, okay, I got it. Because y'all know the difference between cocaine and crack, right? Cocaine, you can still have a job, be the CEO of a company, and be functioning every day and still be on cocaine. But if you do crack, your whole life and your wardrobe is going to change. <laughs> My cousin got on crack in 1987 when it first came to the country. He used to wear sharp Sansa belts, bell bottoms, you know, you know, all that butterfly collar stuff, pork chop sideburn, good looking black man. And he traded it in for the crackhead starter packs. <laughs> Two for five old navy foot flops, cut off jeans, and full time white beaters. All he ever wore after that. My cousin been on crack for 32 years, he's been on since 1987. He's been on crack so long, the crack dudes don't even sell it to him anymore, they give it to him. <laughs> they want to be honored to sell the rock, give away the rock to knock off James Bird. My James Bird is still, mom tell y'all, my cousin's been on crack so long, he's still living in my grandmama's house. 91 A Street, Pelham, Georgia, true story. He still lives there, the house burned down three times. <laughs> You can see him sitting in there right now like he's sitting in there watching TV. The remote. I love my cousin, man. I love my cousin. We're going to keep this thing moving. Hey, Swag, can you bring me this sheet of me and mine? I forgot the next name coming up. Get up my man DJ Swag around here, radio. Swag. I also got my lovely, one of my lovely co-hosts from Them Say What. We do a show every Wednesday from 7 to 9 on um, roundhereradio.com. There's lots of Maria's in the building. Give us some love. Yes. They didn't give me an itinerary this week, but I'm gonna remember the itinerary I've been had, and I'm gonna do some of the stuff off of that. And I also want to shout out, my girl Angela came in the house, she's in here tonight, and her, it's her son's birthday, so we're gonna give a JoJo, a Josiah shout out to you. Shout out to you on your birthday, Josiah. Then they your old Bible name, Josiah. You better, don't do no fucked up shit with no Bible name. They call it, yeah, Josiah Hill is he the defendant? God ah, damn, I had a Bible name. What is this fucked up shit? But now Monday night is poker night right here at Chevy's nightclub. You can come in here. On Tuesday night, they do this contest, man. Y'all gotta see it. It's some far out shit. They do this contest called That's My Comedy. Can you believe that? They do, they do it right here, yeah. That's right. See, y'all knew the class. See, I like y'all. Y'all are on cue. Y'all watch game shows too. I can tell you. They be clapping in the background on Price is Right. We love it, man. Oh, thank you, man. Appreciate that. Gave me the big paper too. All right, and uh, Wednesday nights, the karaoke, you come in and get your sing on right here. Anybody can sing? We got any shower singers in here? Some of y'all sound good with them, with them. Yeah, there you go with them curse clothes down. You take them clothes off, you sound good there. Some of y'all be singing, y'all want to get out this tidy ass girdle, you I'm trying to impress somebody on there. You let that girdle go, you can be yourself. Come on in here and get your sing on, man. Thursday nights, Thursday nights is ladies' night, ladies. No, is it Thursday night? That's right. Thursday night, y'all get in free up until 11 o'clock, man. We got DJ Black and DJ Tim on the ones and twos. Ladies, get in free. So if y'all know some women with jobs, please bring them in here. Because don't nobody want to get no scallywags in here. We want to have our premium, premium women in here. No, no sex trafficking is going on here. Friday night, Friday night, Friday, Saturday, we got a live band every week right here at Chevy's. Every week is a live band. This Friday, the one and only ATL Dream Vision will be in the building. You know, yes, they'll be here. So, in other words, black people, they won't be in 3D this week. They'll be here. So, don't do that. Yeah, they won't be. I, they can't be in two places at one time. Think you're lonely now. Everything got a song to it, black people. So, ATL Dream Vision will be here Friday night. And Saturday night, we will have. Okay. <laughs> We got Unchained, Unchained, Rock Band. Unchained will be right here. It's just like it sounds. Unchained. Ain't nobody gonna have no chains on. They're gonna be rocking out. Is it gonna be like Django Unchained? I love that movie. It was so great. Django. That is the best soundtrack in the world. Y'all like the, the beginning of that Django movie where that dude be singing about Django? This is so nice. Django. We gonna keep it going, man. Are y'all ready for y'all next comedian? Somebody say, yeah. Coming to the stage, man, we got a first-timer. He just 
got into competition tonight. We want to give them a warm, warm welcome. Y'all start clapping right now. Give them a warm, that's my kind of welcome to Kyle. Sometimes it'll make people laugh and you feed off that. 
feed off the little bit of giggles you was getting on bullshit. And sometimes you gotta run with it because you wasn't doing shit. <laughs> and you said it yourself and people was laughing. So sometimes, even though the topic, I, I hear that shit not one time, but take what you get and run with it sometimes, man, it'll help you because don't just give up like that. You know what I'm saying? But I can tell you probably funny, I think. I don't know. I'll be back. Maybe. <laughs> nah, good job, man. <laughs> The one and only, Lester. <laughs> Did you have a few drinks when you got up there? <laughs> now I should have, maybe it would have been better. No, 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 you now you tell you very nervous. Oh, just try again. <laughs> Y'all don't play for that. <laughs> um, I could tell when you came up earlier and, and told me this is your first week and I told you what the, to make sure you knew what the theme was that it kind of threw you for a loop. Well, I'm going to brag on my kid for a minute who made the USA football team. What, what? Tilapia for fish. Let's be bougie. We're trying to get some other stuff. That's just, if you want to pay to the black people your lemon pepper and tilapia, they're going to buy out all the shit you got. But we got sides, uh, collard greens, uh, potato salad, baked beans, mac and cheese. It's a gourmet four cheese mac and cheese. Woo! Woo! For fucking two dollars. Four cheeses, you ain't get for two cheeses. For two <laughs> Fries, mozzarella sticks, uh, they got beef sausage, cheeseburgers, 50-50 uh, burgers, um, half bacon, half beef, all that stuff. And they got chips too, man. So y'all make sure y'all get y'all something to eat. Don't just be in here drinking. It's not club throw up. We got food available. <laughs> Go well, sit here and just drink up all the liquor and then have your stomach messed up. So we got some 40 year old stomachs in here, don't we? 40 years? Yeah, you know, your stomach be kind of different around that 40 year old mark. You can't you, you drinking all that Hennessy and then think you're going to be all right. If you, you lactose intolerant, don't get all that cheese on your stuff tonight, okay? Don't be trying to get that four cheese. Just cut me back to one cheese, bro. I don't need the one cheese on my macaroni. Because y'all know when that stomach starts bubbling, you ain't got but a certain amount of time to get to the bathroom. That, you know, man, that's a universal joke. That's why they're black people. And you got three times to clench your ass trying to push that gas bubble back to your stomach to buy you about another 20 minutes. You know what you're working with. And if you feel that warm squirt, please get your ass out of here. That's all we're going to say. Please get your ass out of here if you feel that warm squirt. <laughs> We're gonna have a good time tonight, man. We're gonna keep this thing going. All right, now at this time, this guy. Now, did I just tell them to stop all that goddamn talking? Y'all gonna start all that talking? Y'all know I can see y'all, right? Shit. Can y'all please get the people a round of applause? Give me your goddamn attention, too. Go on there. Don't just say You can talk again. You can talk. I'm just playing with y'all. We ain't got no security up here. No security. I'm just playing with y'all. We're going to keep it moving. This brother right here currently sits in first place in the entire competition right now. I want you guys to give it up for the one and only. Are there, not that first. Uh, it's Willard. It's Willard. Oh, shit. Oh, wait, hold on. I made a mistake. I skipped somebody. He is currently fourth in the competition. But he's just as good. He's only a couple points behind. He's only a couple points behind, all right? <laughs> Y'all please give it up for the unique style of my man, Willard! What's going on, Chevys? All right. This is my kind of topic here. I like to consider myself like an old school fella. I drive a 1981 car. I love old music. I collect CDs. I like Gary Pussy. I'm a real old school guy. And I've been trying to pass it down. Uh, someone mentioned the Tide Pods earlier, and I've, uh, we've seen a, a large decline in uh, Tide Pod fatality thanks to me. I would like to give credit to that because no one taught these young kids how to experiment with drugs. 
You don't eat the whole entire Tide Pod, kid. You eat half the Tide Pod. See how you feel. And then maybe you take the other side. Maybe you go watch a concert. Give the other half to your friends. Everybody goes home happy. Eat the whole Tide Pod and get way too high, okay? I think us millennials are rubbing off on you older people, though. Today I was at work and this guy got out of his truck. Big old jacked up, lifted up truck. He's probably in his early 50s, late 40s. He stepped out of his truck. And I thought he was gonna have a big old thing of chew in the side of his mouth, but he blows out this huge fruity cloud of vapor in my face. Like, dude, you are too grown for that, man. Hey, what flavor is that? And he said, uh, oh, that's a uh, cotton candy raspberry dream cloud. <laughs> it's pretty disgraceful if you ask me. I'm, I'm almost 30. I've been making my transitions into like a real old school person. You know, like when you're, when you're young, you smoke a lot of grass, you eat some ass. When you get older, you're scared you're going to shit your pants if you pass gas. <laughs> I can't be eating that ass anymore. Me and my wife have been together for eight years tomorrow. And sometimes you don't want to eat that, you know? Like, you go down there and you're ready. You're like, oh, yeah, I'm young. I'm trying to feel young. And then you're like, she said her stomach hurt earlier. <laughs> I'm going to stay away from the booty tonight. I'll feel, I'll still go down, but I'm not going down. You know I mean? I've the best thing that's happened to me recently, though, is my dog chewed my phone. I have been off the grid, out of touch. I, I feel like old school, like Facebook is my house phone. If you want to get in touch with me, if I went to the gas station, it's an adventure. But luckily, I know where I am. A lot of millennials today, I have a friend that if he didn't have his cell phone, if he didn't have his GPS on, he would not know where the fuck he was. If he had a paper map, he could not find his way home. He doesn't even know what street he's on. He comes over to my house and he follows me downtown sometimes. You literally go to the end of my street, you take a right, and you keep going until you're downtown. But every time he's still, hey man, I'm gonna need to follow you downtown, but I can't remember how to get around. I downgraded to the uh, discount plan and my GPS got cut off. And I think that's why uh, horror movies have like got all complex and shit. I was always a fan of like the old slasher movies, but like you can't, I mean, Jason's not fucking with Verizon, dude. We got fucking signal out here at Crystal Lake. Like you're riding off on the helicopter. Yeah, Jason, I called the CIA. I got Verizon, bitch. Put that machete away. But if that phone dies in the second movie, it's gonna be trouble. You don't know where you are, you don't know how to get home, you can't call anybody. Jason, I'm sorry I said that about the CIA. I know you run really fast, so uh, I'm gonna get out of here. Thank you guys, I've been Willard.
Okay. You, you need to move it? Uh, move it up. That's all I got to say. <laughs> I can really go say something else. I was like, wait, like, oh, you ain't going to say shit else. You know, but since the beginning, you've been one of, it's been a couple of y'all, but you've been one of kind of like, you know, special treatment to nobody, but he's been one of kind of one of my favorites. Been consistently funny. I missed a couple of weeks, so I don't know what happened last week. I heard it was some bullshit with everybody. Uh, the week before, I don't know, but pretty pretty decent, man. I like how you brought some of it, even though some people might not have seen that the generation shit, but you was going back to old shit, the new shit, without specifically talking about you know, younger kids. That was actually pretty good, man. You were funny as shit. Thank you. I liked it. The consistency's on point, man. It's a good job. Give it up for my man, Willard. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta be a beautiful day when a guy named Willard can get around the club. That's a, nice... <laughs> That's a name you got to grow into. You ain't gonna really grow into that until you get about 46. <laughs> Willard. That's nice, man. I love it, man. Great job. Great job. Great individuality. I love that, man. Love that. Thank everybody for coming in. We got some late people coming in. Come on in, late people. Thank y'all. Come on in, have a seat. Yes, welcome to late people. Y'all give it up for them. That's right. Don't come in late by yourself. Come in with your wife and everything. Y'all come in as a family late. I love that shit, y'all. See, y'all missed out. We was giving out 20 points on the credit score earlier. Y'all could have y'all could have got financed for a brand new kid by tomorrow. Thirty thousand dollars. That's real. That's what we started now at. You was not gonna get no. Y'all remember Mitsubishi, Augusta Mitsubishi used to finance everybody? Yeah. My cousin had a credit score, he got out of jail. The credit score was a 12, and he came to my house with a brand new Mitsubishi to learn. Like, where'd you get that from? <laughs> credit score in the same digits. <laughs> love it, man, love it, man. This generational stuff is getting crazy, though. Because, you know, I got, I got older, 42, I got kids. I want to be around the kids, see what they're doing. I still like to go play basketball every now and again, you know, hang out, different places kids hang out. My favorite color is purple. I wear purple all the time. That's right. Die Hard, Los Angeles Lakers fan. I love, yes, I love purple. That's right, that's my favorite color. I wear it all the time. I got purple shoes, purple hats, purple shirts, everything. So I was in the mall one day. I knew I shouldn't have been there. Because there was a lot of kids in there. And what kids, they do, if you're in your 40s, they come up, they say disrespectful stuff to you. They don't know who you are. And they'll say, like, what's up, big man? She, what's up, unk? I'm, I'm not your goddamn uncle. I don't know your mama, daddy. I'm not your fucking uncle. They disrespectful. So I seen the kid. We made eye contact. He was like, what's up, unk? I was like, all right, what's up, man? He was like, unk, I got to tell you something, bruh. For real, for real. Just straight up between me and you. I said, all right, what is it? He said, man, look here, bruh. I don't agree with you rocking that goddamn purple color. That's a goddamn bitch-ass color. And you know, my first inclination was to fire back. But I don't know what this dude got on him. Ain't no mall security. They don't ever stop nothing from happening. I don't know what the trouble is in. I don't know what he got to do, but I got to go to work the next day. You know what I'm saying? So I said, you know what, man? We can agree to disagree. That's cool. Only problem I had with this particular guy, this nigga was wearing pink. You, know, you can't tell me that you wearing pink, bro. That's not going to what era we in. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, man, I just want to let y'all know about some of the things I got going on too, man. Um, last weekend, uh, I was in Anderson, South Carolina, this tremendous blues fest out there, 95.3 radio station put on. It was wonderful, fabulous. Myself, my brother, Hennessy Williams, um, Nelly Tiger Travis. Hey, Mr. Sexy Man, what your name is? She was there. Tucker was there, the King of Swing. It was wonderful. It was outdoors. It was hot as fuck. <laughs> But they showed us a lot of love. Before that, I was in Allendale, South Carolina at another blues fest. And they had Theotis Ely. They had uh, Nelly Tiger Travis, she was there too, I guess. That's my girlfriend now, we go together. We've been doing two or three shows together. And they had Poke Bell. This is my side, please. This is my side, please. I had such a good time out there, but I realized something. To get any type of sex to an activity in Allendale, you got to have a house phone. Cause no cell phone worked out there. <laughs> I'm like, who is getting all the pussy in Allendale? It's gotta be a nigga with a house phone. They having like, ha ha ha! He 
ain't got options, nigga. Ain't no options. Verizon don't even work out there. <laughs> and how come when your cell phone ain't got no signal, why we shake it like that bitch gonna get better? <laughs> 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 But this week, I will be at the Villa Theater too, man, opening up the uh, 4th of July comedy show starring uh, Bo P. Barnes, uh, Shouty Shouty, my man Tyler Craig, and um, Shula King, internet sensation, man. So if y'all can get some tickets, y'all can afford some tickets, please come check us out. I don't think they sold out yet. That's a big ass building. I don't know what they was thinking on Thursday. But it's Augusta, Georgia. People don't go see shit on Thursday. Huh? It's a holiday. Oh, it's a holiday. It's a holiday. That's what they was thinking. Shit ain't working out with each other. Like <laughs> they have solicited to all the urban radio stations of black people. I am coming to you, white people, on behalf of myself. Please, please. I do not want to tell no jokes. Thank you, thank you for those goddamn chairs. Hey, how y'all doing? And you know, I'm probably gonna be the first person to go up, right? And you know, people don't, black people don't get there on time. I don't be telling jokes with chairs for real. I want some of y'all to come in here. Family, y'all come in here, you know. Y'all can buy everything online. You know, white people, y'all like to go nowhere. We need to get it online. Love it. Some of y'all got Eventbrite tattoos on y'all, on y'all small y'all back. What's your tramp stamp say? Eventbrite, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. At this time, we're going to keep this thing moving. This, I'm so excited about this next guy coming up. I tried to bring him out earlier, but it wasn't his time yet. But now it is currently first place in the competition. Please give a warm, that's my comic welcome to the one and only Mr. Skylar Q. Andrew. like to say, I'm here to tell y'all no, the fuck y'all did not. <laughs> Your ignorant ass was ignorant then, and your ignorant ass ain't shit to this day. Everybody's looking good, if everybody's feeling good, let the congregation say amen. amen. There is nothing new under the sun. Game remains the same, even though the play has changed. Now, I ain't but 36 years old. I know I sound like I'm from the civil rights era, but I don't know. I don't but folk talk like after 100,000 years of human history, this is the generation that fucked everything up. That math don't calculate to me. Case in point. Even folks my age and a little bit older have trouble processing all the sexual and gender changes going on in society today. We just had Pride Week last week. We have trouble adjusting to things, you know. We uh, have all kinds of LGBTs and transams and what have you. We don't try to figure out what the shit is. And we push back. We push back at that. Woman is a woman and a man ain't nothing but a man. When y'all know good and goddamn well, we all came up watching Prince and Boy George and David Boy and whatever the hell Rick James was doing in them red leather sky high boots. And you had that song. You had that spin me round song. If y'all remember that. You spin me right round, baby, right round. If Brother Tim was to play that song right now, everybody in this room would start clapping and singing along. Black, white, Mexican, and Neapolitan. Everybody. Because that song slaps. Nothing you want the song. Players change, but the game remains the same. Now, 
There's some things that my generation does that I don't really care for. A lot, a lot of the language, a lot of the lingo changes I don't really approve of. For example, you, you don't say prostitution no more. You don't say uh, prostitute. You got, you got to say sex worker if it's consensual. Human trafficking if it's non-consensual. <laughs> when I was coming up, we just called it applying for a loan with Sally Mae. That was, it was a different time. People don't have pets no more. Don't nobody have pets, now you have children. <laughs> We're the proud parents of two doggos and two cats. This is Chester, Duke, and Serendipity. We're proud of our little fur babies. You can't say Jesus no more. You got to say the universe. <laughs> Want to give thanks to the universe for blessing me with this middle management job at Club Call. <laughs> the crowd never has my best interest at all. <laughs> and you, 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 you can't call it, you know, you, you can't call it having existential despair and feeling like God is dead and that there is no hope and it manifests as crippling suicidal depression. Instead, you have to call it, you know, posting the inspirational memes on Facebook. That's, that's what it is now. And of course, you know, this ain't, these ain't the only folks doing this, but at the end of the day, all this shit traces back to white people. I had to go down with me. This shit all goes back to y'all. White people are fucking up this generation <laughs> as they have always been since time immemorial. Nothing new under the sun. The players change, but the game remains the same. I've been Skylar Q. Andrews. And y'all have been wonderful. God bless you. Universe got a blessing, man. Yeah, man. Give it up one more time for Skylar Andrews, man. Woo! Let's go to the judges. Mike, what did you think? I guess Mike's getting up now. Um, okay. Paul Paul had the mic. I mean, he fucked that up. I'm sorry. Yeah, I did, man. Uh, dude, there's a reason why you're in first. That was, that was, uh, you, you're a pro, man. You're a pro. Uh, you may not be on TV yet, brother, but you about to be. You, you for real. Hey, Amen. I agree with you. You get better and better every week. You might be holding back. You're just doing just enough to stay ahead of the game. But you are getting better and better every week. Right on, Pop on. My man. This boy. Every week brings it. And I will tell you, a lot of people here, when you don't get paid for this, they consider you an amateur because you ain't getting paid. That's the only reason. But when you listen to this man here, this is a pro. And I know it's kind of hard for some guys, don't let when somebody let that go in front of you, make you feel, oh, I can't do it. But you're fucking hilarious, dog. And it's consistent every week, man. Pro all day, man. Good job, brother. Y'all about to get my ass with my other comments. I don't need all <laughs> Y'all give it up man, for Skylar Andrews. <laughs> I love that delivery, man. Oh my God, that slow talk be killing me. They always set y'all up some different shit, don't they? I'm going to blame everybody for that. No, just the white people. Y'all <laughs> That's great, man. Y'all give it a one more time for Skyler, man. That was awesome. Awesome job, awesome job, awesome job, awesome job. We're going to keep this thing moving. I'm almost about to go watch CSI. I can't wait, man. I like the other show, LL Cool Day, too. And you know you're in a different generation. Because my kids didn't even know LL Cool Day used to be a rapper. <laughs> 
Man, he look like that dude that, that be on the show with that other dude on the cop show. Man, it's LL Cool J, man. This one of the baddest dudes to ever do it, man. Ice-T. Come on, now, nah, Ice-T and LL. He wasn't a good rapper. I didn't like his music. <laughs> Fuck you. Cop, 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 cop. I hate it, Ice-T. I can stand him. Cop, 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 cop. Yeah, man, we got been to LA, man. We quit the blood. Okay, good idea, man. You a goddamn actor. The wife with fake boobs. She's fine. Though. You know, I fake <laughs> whole lot of ass. Well, I tell y'all what. That's what. That's what I really want to get to. We we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, <laughs> but my kids didn't know LA was like a rapper, man. I had to go back and show them like the I'm Bad video. You remember my I'm Bad video? Oh, doom, 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 doom. Nobody can rap Who's quite like I can. I'll take a muscle battle man and put his face in his face. I was like, shit. I'm gonna tell y'all how old school I am. I didn't even have a tape. I put a tape recorder up to the TV. I turned Video Soul up loud. He was like number seven that weekend. I pushed play and I got the whole song on it. It was great. I used to play it back and listen to it. That was my joint. I used to love it. It was LL, my guy. Because nobody said it. Now back to the fake booze and that shit, man. I'm going to get me one. See, my goal in comedy is to be able to make enough money. I want to be rich. But I really want to have enough money to date outside my race and afford a drug habit. <laughs> you know, right now I could get, I could have a drug habit, but I'm gonna lose some shit. I'm gonna be able to have a comfortable drug habit like Scottface. He ain't give a shit about it. He snorted cocaine, got shot with machine guns. He didn't give a fuck. That was right in his budget. I fuck around and get on cocaine right now, man. I might be catching rides and shit, selling shit, pawning stuff. I can't do that, man. I gotta keep it like this, keep me jiggy. And I'm gonna date outside my race by the end of this competition. Yeah, I'm gonna be a young gated community. Come out there to get the mail. Hey, how you doing, Sharon? Frank? Fred? How are you? <laughs> I'm gonna have my robe open and everything. How are you guys today, huh? All right. Yeah. How about that Wall Street? <laughs> We're gonna keep this thing moving, man. This next brother in the competition has come through. He's only been in count. This is his third week. He got first place two weeks in a row. He like Goldberg. You mind Goldberg whooping everybody ass? Like, Who's next? He like Goldberg in competition. We want to know if he can keep the street going. Please start clapping right now. Give a warm. That's my kind of brother, Mr. Kevin Franklin. Oh my god. Like the baby boomers are always like always making fun of 
one was like, we didn't do half the crazy shit y'all do. When I was your age, we didn't do half the crazy shit. Y'all did plenty of crazy shit. Like buy a house at 21 with a minimum wage job and no down payment. <laughs> That's crazy as shit. But we're crazy because we want to eat ass and save the environment. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, like, something I've heard like, recently is like millennials are killing the movie industry. I agree with you, we are. It's just like reboot after reboot. They're making sequels to movies that just don't even make sense. They shouldn't exist, you know? Like, I'm ready to hear, like, this spring, be sure to catch the most anticipated movie of the year. The Passion of the Christ 2. <laughs> the Passion Reloaded. <laughs> That's right. Our Lord and Savior is back and he's ready to put sandals to asses. <laughs> Our Lord and Savior returns. He's bringing twice the miracles, twice the salvation, twice the damnation, and all the forgiveness you never even knew you needed. <laughs> It's a story of mercy, courage, lies, and betrayal. And with a twist you won't see coming, it's sure to leave you asking yourself, what wouldn't Jesus do? <laughs> coming soon to a home theater and a mega church near you. <laughs> like, there's also like a generation coming behind us, Gen Z. I hate them too. Honestly, like, they have, I don't, in my opinion, they don't have a personality. They don't know how to make their own personality. It's all like from online, Facebook, Instagram. They're the Instagram generation, okay? I went on a date with this chick recently. She was 22 years old. I'm gonna be 29 this month, okay? She's seven years younger than me. I did not, after the date, I had no idea what sort of music she was into, what her dreams were, what sort of like, what her political views were. But you know what I knew after that date? She was a Sagittarius, a Hufflepuff, House Targaryen, Team <laughs> Edward. If she was a drink from Starbucks, she'd be a caramel frappuccino. She's the color blue. Uh, if she was a piece of jewelry, she'd be an ankle monitor. And apparently, if she, if she was a vehicle, she'd be a 2008 yellow Nissan Xterra with her initials decal on the back. I, I, I knew nothing about her after the day. I left her, I was like, I didn't know anything about her. At one point, I was like, hey, how, how would you, you know, how would you describe yourself? She's like, well, I took a Facebook quiz today. <laughs> and apparently, if I was a pizza, I'd be a pineapple pizza. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, no, I get it, because you don't make sense and nobody likes you. <laughs> and if they did, they'd be way too ashamed to admit it. Now I have a confession to make. I love the fuck out of pineapple pizza. <laughs> So we've been dating for a little while now. <laughs> hey, that's my time, y'all. My name's Kyle Frank. I really appreciate it. Good job. <laughs> Gotta give it up to Kevin Frank one more time. <laughs> Paul, Paul, do you have the microphone? <laughs> yeah, brother. Please speak on it. He started out strong. I hate that one. Yeah. <laughs> I love you, Paul. Paul. <laughs> Mike, uh, Jamar, Jamar, uh, I just think about Kevin. This is my first time seeing you, my man. When you came out, I didn't know what it was going to be. You about to sing some Beatles hits or some shit like that. Or, uh, what's the part of the All that shit, but let me tell you something, man. You funny as hell. Get a stage presence, man. Way to stay amped up, fired up. Your energy was high level. Yo, that was on point, man. Thank you. Kevin, right, another great job. That's three weeks in a row, man. You killed it. Uh, I don't know what's going to shape up this week. You won the last two. You're definitely in the running this week. Uh, I mean, you, you, great job, man. I wish we would have had you from week one for sure. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all give it up for Kevin Franklin. Awesome job. Oh, man. That was tight there. Huh? Uh, <laughs> I got the paper over there. Mike, Mike's gonna bring it up right quick. Uh, this is only yeah. his third week. Yeah. So like, after his first two weeks, he well after week one he was in like 13th place. He went up to eighth this week, and I'm sure he'll make a big jump again this week. So as long as he keeps showing up every week, he's he's gonna be in contention for sure. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Y'all get up to Kevin one more time, man. <laughs>
He was still hype when the judge was talking. He was jumping around in place and shit. That's scary. <laughs> I mean, calm down. You remember, you know, when you early, like that's that's you know the generational gap. But when you're in your twenties, everything moved fast. You move fast as shit. Man, everything moved fast to me till I was 34 and a half. When I turned 35, all that shit stopped. It was like the Matrix. You know how they can see the bullets coming and shit? They were looking at the bullets like that. I was like, everything did for me. Everything stopped. I didn't want to move fast no more. I go to basketball club, people moving fast around. I'm like, why y'all running so fast? Cut that shit out. Everything has slowed down. I'm in a chill state of mind now. I don't like to see nobody running around unless they're on the fucking football field. Somebody kick the goddamn ball. You went as fast as you want to then. Don't be around the house and moving around and shit. Everybody know somebody hyper like that? Old ass ADHD motherfuckers, they had their best and shit. They run around talking fast and shit. Sit your ass down somewhere. I couldn't tell him that because he was up there getting the judge and he was hyped. You know, I, I understand the adrenaline be going, but you know, Kevin, if we drinking a beer at the bar later on, you start jumping around, you tell you sit your ass down somewhere. Cause that's how you know you're older too, you tell people stuff like that. You ain't never said that when you was younger, man. You ain't care. Like, look, you be running around with them. Pew, 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 pew. Now, me and you be sitting there together, watching Golden Girls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Watch all them late night shows that you hated back in the day. I be watching hell. I be watching. I say Archie Bunker was racist. I be watching that shit all the time at nighttime. Motherfucking Archie Bunker. I love when the heat of the night. You ever know the heat of the night? Yeah. The one with Virgil Tibbs. Virgil, Virgil Tibbs. I love that shit. <laughs> old ass police cars. <laughs> Shout out to people still buying them old ass police cars with the auctions and shit. <laughs> Fuck y'all pulling up next to me late at night. I ain't got no car insurance either. What the fuck is that, man? What is your man? Put the drink down. Shit, throw, throw the shot to one. Oh, I ain't no time. That's goddamn Tyrone. There ain't no real police, man. <laughs> you owe me a drink, nigga. I hate that shit, man. And it always be the thug dude that would buy an old ass cop car from auction. It ain't no law abiding citizens in that, is it? And you can tell what it is, but they didn't file a goddamn number off the back. You can see the color, the decal be scratched off. Then they go and join the goddamn car club. And they say, you know, they cool as fuck. They cool as fuck with an old ass cop car. Bullshit. Still got there. Come on, stand right on there. Fuck that shit. Take that shit off the car. I threw out too much goddamn spill. Let me fuck around with y'all, man. Now, we have come to this time in the competition where we are on our last comic. All right? Yes, yes, our last comic. Please. Thank, thank everybody for coming out. Yes, yes, please. Please. Yes. Thank you. And please make sure that you tell somebody as you came to Shaggy that you had a wonderful time, man. We got this competition. We got five more weeks in the competition. These comedians, they need your support. And what was that? Yeah, your, um, your scorecards. Scorecards. Don't forget, y'all fill out y'all scorecards. Y'all are part of the judging, too. Fill out your scorecards. Your judges will, judges will tag. We're getting the judges to score tonight. Um, I thought you had like super fucking vision to see what he was holding up for you. I yeah, I, I had to ask. I had to ask. He did some. It, we got like celebrities. Yeah, I thought y'all was like. Yeah. yeah. It's like it's like you like Jean Grey. I'm about to call the shield on your ass. Yeah. <laughs> like Jean Grey and Professor X, we be you know, most time we be there. But that's how he just held some shit up in the air. We was all he was like Gambit. I was like, you want to gamble? You want to play cards? I didn't see it. But make sure y'all fill out those cards. Y'all take them, put them in the bucket up front. They're going to tabulate those scores later on. And Mike's going to post them online. Make sure y'all go to the That's My Comic page. Like it so you can keep up with the uh, with the competition and the point standings and all that stuff. And the topics. And the topics. I'm going to reveal the topic for next week after this last comic. Some people say you saved the best for last. But sometimes, sometimes somebody just goes last. This guy has a heart of gold. He has a great spirit. He is a warrior. He's been back. Uh, this is his third week. Every week, he's been here. He's been here for three weeks. That's all we can do today. Please give a warm welcome. He is supremely talented. He's a I mean, singer, songwriter, all that stuff. He's still from Walmart. He is very, very talented. Please give it up. For the one and only, our last comment of the night. Give a warm, that's my comment. Welcome to Mr. Tim G. Definitely not. 
my best song. The thing about millennials is, see, I was born in 85, but you can't really tell because I'm kind of sheltered, so I really didn't grow up as an 85 year old. Wasn't that the baby, baby <laughs> boomer days? So I couldn't go nowhere, couldn't go play, couldn't go out and hang out with friends. So my entertainment was action figures. And since that's all I had, I had every single one from Spawn, Spider Man, Batman. That's how, you, that's how you know I'm old. You are too, because you know who Spawn is. <laughs> the thing is, if it wasn't for me being sheltered, I would probably be just like these new millennials, ready to quit. <laughs> nope, not me. Four weeks a week. <laughs> that's how you know I'm still young too, because. These new generations, see, they come up with, with, with terms that I, I, I can't get down with. I call myself trying to be young. See, back when I grew up, you know, this was then. Sagging pants, walking around, doing like this. This was the shh. That was then. These days, in order to be popular and cool, you got to have the new Jordans on and your pants got to fit just like this. <laughs> see, me having the mentality that I came from 85, I thought that was gay until I seen all the gay guys with the fine girls. <laughs> Once I seen that, I said, Urkel sure knew what he was doing. <laughs> he was way ahead in the game. Laura, I'm here for you, baby. I took notes from him. He was never last in the competition. Now, said he really touched on the point that I was going to mention. They say he always saved the best for last. <laughs> They didn't say the best one. <laughs> I showed some things, which reminds me, how many of y'all like old school music? Yes, sir. Right? Yeah. Like the music that actually means something. Yeah. I love it. Let me give you an example. How did you get here? Nobody's supposed to be here. Classic song, right? Let a millennial hear it. They will flip it, remix it, and come up with this. How did you get here? Bitch, I caught the bus. Nobody's supposed to be here. They just remix everything. That's how I know that the new generation is taking over. They got so many Sprite remixes. When I go in the store, I don't know what to buy. I just go, let me get a Sprite. The cat should be like, okay, which one do you want? Do you want the Sprite remix? Do you want the Sprite cherry, cherry Coke Sprite? Or do you want the Alpha Manila Sprite that comes with the extra shot of vodka? You know which one I chose. The one that came with the vodka. Because if you mix that vodka Sprite with the vodka that's already in the car, that's a new ingredient for a recipe that nobody thought about. <laughs> but I still can't get with how these new kids come up with so many different slangs. Like, okay, y'all remember when something was funny, we'd be like, oh, <laughs> you, you, you got jokes, right? Not these kids. They'd be like, you say something funny. <laughs> you got me weak. And I tried to get down with that. I was like, okay, that's what I gotta do. Tighten up my pants. You know, if somebody makes me laugh, so then, <laughs> you got me weak. Mm -mm, not millennials. See, they know when you old. Mm -hmm. They'll be looking at you just like this. Oh, he think he done caught on to us. Oh, we've been weak for two months now. Mm -hmm. Oh, he weak now? Tim G's weak? Mm -hmm. We'll switch it. He was weak. Now he's dead. Right. <laughs> and it caught me off guard. Because my 13 year old son was walking around the house. I told him, hey, son, go to the refrigerator and get me something to drink. My dad used to do to me all the time. I'd be happy to get my dad something to drink. I used to complain when he couldn't hear me. I thought, I can't get it himself. He said, have kids. You have to give him something to drink. So I tried. I told my son to give me something to drink. I said, son, go in the kitchen. Get your dad something to drink. Two hours later, I see my son walking around with his phone. 
I'm like, son, I almost died of dehydration. What are you doing? And he said, Dad, I'm, I'm trying to find you something to drink. I said, why are you looking at your cell phone? He said, I'm trying to get the GPS to find the refrigerator. <laughs> son, we only have a two bedroom house. The refrigerator is right beside your room. It's crazy. What else is I can't I can't get down with? When I grew up, my parents used to tell me, be careful what you say. Right? All right. So no matter what I did, every time I was around younger people, and they were like, oh, you got me weak, you got me dead. I used to try to correct them. Yeah. That's what grown people do. They correct people. So I went to a group of people, <laughs> you got me weak. Nope, you're strong. <laughs> Turn around two months later. I go and tell G you so funny. You got I must have did better this week because Dad didn't come up here this early. He was still over there trying to get a drink. <laughs> hey, y'all give it up for Tim G one time. Yeah. Yeah. And guys, this point in the show is brought to you by Polar Pop Cup. You get one of these and two hot dogs. $2.99 that you're going to pay for, you know that. Let's take it to the judges. Tim, what's up, man? Tim, what's up, man? Tim, he said my name, he let everybody know I know you. Yeah. I ain't going to be a motherfucker to know that. Nah, so you my dog. And yeah, yeah, you alright, man, but you know. I don't even know. How the fuck am I supposed to respond to it? You was like, I'm going to tell you, Tim, you did better this week than the week I talk shit about you. All right, so I'm going to give you your props. I'm being real. You was better tonight than you were before, so that shows improvement. Yeah, appreciate it. I'm glad so I'm not going to shit on you, my man. It shows improvement. Good job. Paul, Paul. I'm going to sit on that, though. You are better now than you were then. <laughs> you get better. I mean, that's really good place. You are get better. <laughs> All right. Lord works in mysterious ways. <laughs> MG. All right. So, um, from the first week, look, the Cedric's been doing this game a long time. There's a reason why the Cedric can stand up there and make the crowd laugh a lot. Okay, because he's had, I, I mean, I, I didn't notice the Cedric when he started, but I imagine there was probably some nights and he had some people like not really reacting to him at all. Yeah, I got the video. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, oh, we got old school in the back. I was going to bring that video out. Telling all your damn secrets. So, anyway, all I can say is like, when you started this whole thing, you told us that Look, I ain't used to this. Now you obviously tonight proved that your ass can sing. Okay? So you can do that. Um I mean he's laughing. I don't know why he's laughing, because there's gonna be some singing. But all I can say is this is that you know, I I I appreciate the fact you're still here. And I appreciate the fact you let us and to Cedric kind of give you shit about it. But bro, you're talented as hell, okay? This may not be the gig that you end up in, but that's fine. The more times you can get up there on that stage in front of people and, and make yourself vulnerable to people, the better it's gonna make you be at the stuff you do really well, which is singing and stuff like that, right? So, I appreciate the fact that you're here, and I kind of appreciate the fact that you can let us talk shit about you all night, but you still go up there and do your best, yeah. right? Yeah. That says a lot about you as a man. Y'all give it up one more time for Tim P. Yeah. What a wonderful way to end the show. That was so inspirational. Tim, I'm gonna throw you a bone. Get some music jokes. Tim, I'm gonna throw you another bone. Get some music jokes. <laughs> Tim, if you didn't already know it, I'm gonna tell you one more time. Get you some music jokes. 
give you a perfect example of a music show. You can rewrite a popular song to the beat of your own drum. You know what I'm saying? I tell a joke about big girls, okay? I love big with them. You know what I'm saying? I got a big girl song. Can I sing my big girl song? Yeah! It's amazing how you knock me to my knees. Well, uh, every time you take them shoes off your big ass feet. Oh, uh, now I've never seen a woman eat this way. No, I haven't. I cooked your dinner and you took both plates away. So I want to know, I want to know, just tell me fam. Uh, how I can feed your greedy yeah. I like to know, I like to know what makes you smile. So I can be your favorite brother for a while. Listen to me, baby. Tell me what I gotta do to feed you. Baby, anything you say I do, I don't never wanna disrespect you. So we ain't talking about no finger food. Tell me what I gotta do to feed you. Baby, anything you say I do, they got your only picture up at Ryan's. And you've been kicked out of Golden Corral too. You know what I'm saying? You take a song and you make it your own, man. You take a parody of a song, what people think about it or what they hear, man. People hear that Usher singing. Funny. Huh? That shit wasn't funny. It wasn't funny. Oh, yes! I knew it! I knew I would get under a big woman's skin in any night. Yes, I did it again. That's another one. But you take the parody of a song, a regular song, man. And you just put your twist on it, man, like the Usher song. You heard that? I don't mind. Shawnee, I don't mind if you dance on a pole. That'll make you a hoe. Shawnee, I don't mind if you work until three. If you leave here with me, go get that money, 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 that money, money, money. Then get really into it. Cause I know how it is. Girl, go handle your biz. Get that money, 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 that money, money, money. You can take off your clothes. Long as you come at home, girl, I don't mind. Now that's an understanding song, ain't it? That is an understanding man, ain't it? We're so condescending, man. We don't know what that lady went to while she up on that pole dancing. We don't know what she getting for being on that pole. She is not a hoe just because she danced on a pole. <laughs> the bitch is off to a good start, though. <laughs> she got some accelerated hoe credits. <laughs> I don't know if she's got a master's, but she's at least got an associate. <laughs> that so that's just an example of some stuff that you can do with your vocals, Tim. So please go back to the drawing board and work on it, man. You actually do have a lot of talent. Comedy might not be the thing for you. <laughs> but you do have talent. I mean, you know, yeah, everybody, you know, y'all heard uh, Milton Hershey went bankrupt five times before he made it big, right? Huh? Who the fuck gonna say with somebody five times of being bankrupt? The white black bankrupt and black bankrupt is different. So y'all, y'all go to bankrupt to keep y'all shit, to keep the goddamn house, the boat, and the yacht. We go bankrupt to get on the payment plan. <laughs> All right, you got this. You ready? You want to know? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we have the owner of this establishment. He's right here. Give it up for Mr. Mike Schnellberger. Well, you can't dance anyway. Oh, yeah. so, you, you, you do remember I pay you, right? Oh, yeah. But I think you did have a mother. All right, so uh, tonight, third place is Rum D. Second place, but only by a point, is Kevin Franklin. A.K.A. Raggy Rock. And then first place is Skyler Rock. All right, I want to tell y'all what's going on next week now. 
Next week, our theme is going to be clean comedy. Okay? Yeah, so y'all can't fucking cuss. Stop bitching. But this night is going to be sponsored by Jamar Bingham from Evans Kia. And also, he does real estate too. I don't remember the company, sorry, but I love you. Huh? Tiny Jones Real Estate. So, Jamar is going to sponsor that night. And what's going to happen is we have a big name internet comedian. If you look him up, his name is Josh Harris. Okay? If y'all ain't familiar, go home, Google search Josh Harris. You'll see this guy's legit. Now, the way that's going to work is this guy's going to be one of the judges. Probably take my place because nobody likes me. But <laughs> after. The show is over, so Cedric's going to do his five or ten minutes or whatever it is while the judges are tabulating. Since I won't be there, the math is probably going to be fucked up because they're Three doing minutes. it. Can't do it. But, so uh, anyway, he's going to do however many minutes he has. And, and Josh is going to come up here and he's going to give y'all ten to fifteen minutes of, this guy is legit A- minus comedian. I mean, he ain't Kevin Hart. But if you look him up online, you'll see 100 videos of him. He's 100% legit. Y'all make sure that next Tuesday y'all are here. And remember that it's all being sponsored by Jamar Bingham, my man. And uh, I tell everybody in the world that me and that man can't be further away in political views. But that just goes to show you, if you look at the heart of a person, you can love somebody even though they're crazy as hell when it comes to politics. <laughs> but anyway, I appreciate y'all being here. To Cedric, close the night out. Appreciate you, brother. All right, man. What a nice, beautiful, ebony ivory moment they just had. Hey, he ain't completely ebony, by the way. Oh, no, he ain't. Yeah, he ain't, yeah. Somebody slipped over the slave house. <laughs> <laughs> While we are here picking coal and my son inside doing the lemonade, boss. <laughs> that ain't your son and boy. We're not gonna talk about that. That's, uh, that never happened, guys. It's just jokes. But uh, yeah, that was nice to remember the tight moment y'all had. Uh, y'all was like Coach Boone and Coach Yost. <laughs> but uh, next week, man, Josh Harris is awesome, man. I worked with him before. Y'all gonna see. Y'all in for a real treat, so please spread the word. He's going to be here next week. He's going to help judge the competition. He's also going to perform as well. Yeah. Yeah, I know what that means by sponsor, right? I mean, yeah. Jamar had to pay some money, so he probably got to leave and sell some weed. He <laughs> can't <laughs> have no money to get Josh here back. Because Josh, uh, he's been on NBC and a lot of other stuff, too. So he's really, really funny. Plays the piano, does a whole lot of stuff. Man. So y'all are in for a real treat, okay? So please, go back. Let everybody know y'all came to That's My Comic. And we got a special guest coming next week, okay? Go to Facebook, like the That's My Comic page. And um, my man, I like him right there. He, he's holding some money up in the air. Oh, that's your credit card. That's a credit card, yeah. Y'all need a flat screen. I'm trying to get over 50 inch. That's a dollar. That's a dollar, oh, okay. I'm trying to get that debit card, sir. I'm trying to get this 32 inch TV. I'm trying to get over 55 inch. I'm just this shit. But again, my name is Cedric, man. I'm your host of MC. Thank each and every one of you guys for coming out. Awesome job to all the comedians tonight. Thank you very much. That's week five of that to my comment. And also give it up to DJ Tim on the one and two, man. Good job, DJ.